Galatians chapter 4, starting at verse number 8. Trying to hurt God, trying to hurt God. Don't pay me no mind. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Galatians 4, 8, when you have it, say amen. amen. I'm going to be reading from the NIV this morning, my God, of this afternoon. And the word of God reads, before you Gentiles knew God. Let me bring a little understanding. Anybody that was not born a Jew was considered a Gentile. And so, my God, the book of Galatians, Paul is talking to you and I. Because we was not born Jews. We are, would be considered Gentiles. It says, so before you, meaning you can put your name there. Before you Gentiles knew God, you were slaves to so-called gods, little g, that do not even exist. You know, you can make a God be anything in your mind. So now that you know God, or should I say now that God knows you? God knows who you are, but we're talking about intimacy. Being converted, my God, from the outside to the inside. Being born again. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now that you know God, or should I say now that God knows you, why? He asking a question to the Christians. Uh, I'm asking the same questions to us. Why do we or you want to go back again and become slaves? Once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles of this world. Paul says you are trying, Christians, to earn favor with God by observing certain days or months or seasons or years. Yeah. Verse 11 says, Paul said, I, f I fear for you. That's the heart of a father right there. Perhaps all my hard work, Paul says, with you was for nothing. I'm going to go down to verse 12. Dear brothers and sisters, Paul says, it's from a father's position, I plead with you to live as I do in freedom from these things. What things? To observe in certain days and months and seasons. He said, live in freedom from that stuff. He said, for I became like you Gentiles, free from, the, from those laws. Father, thank you. Thank you for stopping by and visiting us. Thank you for giving me a few moments. Lord, I was trying to sense you because I didn't think I was going to get it. Mm. But whatever your will is through the rest of this service, Father God, let your will be done. Touch, save, and let the people be honest with your truth. Pastor Dean always have said, Father God, people will reject truth because it don't make them feel good. So don't let no one reject your truth today. Discern, Father God. Help the people to discern what's truth and what ain't truth. And then when they discern it, let them receive it so it can produce a transformation in their lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Let the church say amen. You may be seated in God's presence. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Yes, he is worthy. That's amazing because I was sitting in my study and I kind of posted that about God is so worthy. And they sung it. <laughs> Worldly. Mm. Have you ever found yourself, church, at a place in life where the path forward looks hard? Anybody ever? Yes, sir. So you want to turn around and go back to where you were. Mm -hmm. You've tried to move forward in your career or a relationship or your walk with Christ. Yet in the process, things have gotten harder rather than easier. Is God talking to anybody so far? Mm, mm, mm. And you then realize that to continue to move forward is going to require more out of you than you want to give. When you get to a place when the path forward looks difficult, we often tend to take a glance back. Mm. Over our shoulders to see, my God, what we've left behind. And sometimes, my God, Christians, we decide that it's just easier to turn around and go back. We find it easier to turn around and go back than it is to continue to struggle to move forward. This is where the Galatians were. They wanted to go back. 
The Galatians were in a very tough spot, just like some of you are right now. All of us, as a matter of fact, all of us is in a very tough spot. Mm. They couldn't see any way forward, uh, so they were, they were turning back to what was familiar. Oh, God is talking. Uh, you observe, Paul said, days and months and seasons and years, according to Galatians 4 and 10. Paul laments, my God, in recognizing they returned to their pre-conversion, pagan practices. As a result, the Galatians were deserting the one who has called them. They are defecting, church, listen to my verbiage, from the faith. They had taken up the adulterous practices of their old way of life. They are relapsing, relapsing. See, there you go right there. All y'all to think that uh, relapsing just consists of, the word relapse just consists of drugs and alcohol. Uh, that's not true. So that's why many people, when you hear us say something about deliverance or delivering from this and that, my God, you let that go over your mind. But what about those other areas uh, uh, that, that got you and I, I and you in captivity, my God, that we keep relapsing to? Uh, everybody's situation is not drugs and alcohol, but everybody relapsed to something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, my God, they was relapsing, my God, to slavery, though, uh, of the former times mm -hmm, when they neither knew God or were known by God, by him. This is a plea, church, my God, uh, and a rebuke and a warning, my God, from Paul to the Galatians about the foolishness of turning back. So the title of this sermon is Turning Back to What? <laughs> Think about that. Look at your neighbor and say, turning back to what? Come on, look at your name and say it again. Turn it back to what? So point number one, put that on the screen for me for those that's up there working. My God, turning back, my God, it, 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 will, it will leave you powerless to move forward. See, sometimes we tend to think, my God, that there's pressure, the struggle uh, gets too hard. But to go back, my God, is a serious problem. I don't know about y'all, but I preached many years ago in 2013. My God, uh, uh, I think it was 2013, 2014, so often on my, there is no plan B. If you got a plan B, you are already set up to return backwards. You have already relapsed. If you have given, if you have given yourself an escape goat, if you have given yourself another door to walk through, if you have told yourself, I'm going to try this, but if this don't work, I'm going back, my God. And, and, and I hate to say it, but some people keep two or three men and two or three women because if the marriage don't work, I can, uh, they keep those old phone numbers. I'm trying to help somebody in the church, my God. Oh, my God, because when pressure uh, uh, to move forward gets too strong, we say, we turn back. Trust me, my God, even though just looking online, there's many people that's defecting from the faith. If you're paying attention to society and if you're looking at everything that's going on in the world, that's why the Bible tells us, my God, not to walk by sight but by faith. Because if you listen to the news and you look at the body of Christ as a whole and you look at some of your friends and loved ones, some of the people that led you to Christ and that brought you to church is no longer even in church no more. People are defecting and turning back, my God, because of pressure. They're not built to last. The only way you're going to outdo a pressure, the only way you're going to outlast pressure and outdo pressure, my God, you're going to have to get in the book. You're going to have to lay on your face. You're going to have to bring that stuff, my God, and sacrifice it on the altar. You're going to have to gain strength, my God, from the spirit of the living God. That's why the word of God tells us to put to death, put to death the deeds of the flesh by way of his spirit. I'm going somewhere, I promise you. So returning back, my God, leaves you powerless to move forward. So if you're thinking about turning back, if you're entertaining any of your former life, you're already defeated. Because before you and I, I and you ever turn back, you didn't turn back in your mind before your body turned back and go all the way in. So if you're already, come on, if you're already looking back, come on, Lot's wife, come on. If you're already looking back, thinking back, my God, even looking over your shoulder, my God, the enemy is already flirting with you. If you have already convinced yourself, my God, that it, I, I, it must be a little bit more easier. I think I may try it again. I, it might not be this bad this time, my God. I, uh, you know, I think I can do a little better. I won't do this, but I'll do that. I won't do this, but I'll do that. Yeah, I already defeated. Why is the Spirit of God taking me? Because, see, the battle is right here. The battle is right here. And there's many people all over the country, my God, that's losing the battle. So when you find, my God, what you will find when you go back to your old way of life, it's not greater. Write this word down, strength and freedom. Please write those words down. Strength and freedom. Freedom. My God. So when you decide to go back to your old life, you will not find strength and freedom to help you move forward. What you will find, my God, is greater bondage and slavery. Now, see, I need you to stop and think about something. I just gave you four words. Strength, 
Freedom, bondage, and slavery. And the Spirit of God woke me up at four this morning, my God, and I began to study, and you and I got to examine yourself like Paul admonished us to do. You got to ask yourself right now at this present time, who, my God, under the sound of my voice, am I more in strength and freedom, or am I more closer to slavery and bondage? Who am I talking to right now, my God? Even though I'm in church, my God, am I more towards uh, freedom? Uh, uh, come on, somebody, or am I more towards slavery and bondage? You got to examine yourself because if you're more closer, my God, towards captivity and some form of slavery and bondage, then you might want to shift. Come on, come on, y'all talk to me. Ask yourself, am I more stronger now than I was when I first got saved? Am I better this week than I was last month? Come on, my God, am I more weaker? Am I, am I entertaining more of going back than I am moving forward? If you think about going back more than you think about going forward, baby, you're in a bad place right now, and you better get to the altar where the fire of God is at because it's a matter of time for you to go back and you might not make it back. Oh, this is a good word. Ask yourself, am I, am I stronger? Am I in freedom? Or am I closer to bondage and slavery? Look at your neighbor again and say, turn back to what? Turn back to what? This is what Paul wanted the Galatians to understand. Turning back to their old habits, their former way of life, is utter foolishness. Because the things they'll be returning to are completely powerless to get them to where they want to go. Completely powerless. It's, it's not going to give you strength. It's not going to give you freedom. The very things that we are tempted to turn back to is the very things, my God, that ran us to the church. So, so to go back, it'd be like the Bible says, baby, my God, it's like a dog we're turning back to is vomit. And I was telling Pastor Ron, my spiritual son, senior pastor of Connection Church this morning, I said, my God, I made up my mind a long time ago. My God, that it ain't no shadow of turning, my God. Even before I preach this sermon on there is no plan B. My God, I already had my mind made up in that prison cell that I, I, there's no way, there's no, there's, there's no shadow of turning. I can't go back because I understand I've had a personal relationship and a personal encounter with God to know that if I ever decide to go back, I'll never make it out. See, some of y'all, my God, that might not be your story, but that's my story. And so I got to pursue, I got to seek, I got to knock, I got to ask. Come on, somebody. I got to continue to hunger after God, Kenny, because I can't not go back. Who am I talking to in the church? That needs to be some of y'all mindsets. And then you'll find yourself in freedom. You'll find yourself in strength when the devil attack your home, when the devil attack your life, my God. Because you're seeking God, you'll be strong. And you'll stay in freedom instead of turn around and go back to slavery and bondage. See, some of you will talk yourself out of just what I said, and you tell yourself, does it really take all that? Yeah, look at your life. Look at your life. And if you were in bondage, if you were in any form of captivity, you steady crying about the same thing that you should be set free from, you better take my mindset I just gave you. Oh, this is good. Look at your neighbor and say, turn it back to what? Not only are the patterns of our behavior from the former way of life, watch this, powerless, but Paul adds that they are also powerful. The Bible says when a house is swept clean, the Bible says the spirit runs around, oh my God, seeking rest and it finds none and it returns back to the house. And the state of that person is seven times worse. Yeah. So think about this. Think about this. Think about it. I thank God for revelation. My God, if I'm going to be seven times worse than what I was, Minister Melvin, when I came to God, I was already dead when I came to him. So if I'm going to be seven times worse than what I was when I accepted Christ, won't you get that revelation? Think about what you was. Think about how bad you was. Think about the things that had you in captivity. Think about your mindset. Think about your emotions. Think about the things God snapped you out of. And to go back, it's going to be seven times worse. The very things that bring you to the altar. The very things that make you read. The very things that make you pray. The very things that make you fast. The very things that wake you up at night. This thing, that stuff going to be seven times worse. I, 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 I don't want to deal with that level of pain. I don't want to deal with it. When you've been away from something, it's more powerful when you go back to it. The whole is more stronger. Now, that's why you can't keep, that's why the Bible says a little leaven, leaven the whole. You can't, you can't keep diving. You can't keep flirting. You can't keep messing with stuff because it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. That's why the Bible says in the Genesis, I taught y'all it was a snake, but by the time it got to Revelation, it was a dragon. That means it's been eaten all these years. Some of the stuff that we started out doing, my God, now we can't stop doing it. We was flirting with it, my God. We was jabbing at it, my God. And now we can't stop. Yeah. Even as Christians. Because it ain't got too powerful. The very things that we're trying to turn back to, my God, they will enslave you all over again. 
That's why the Bible says go on from elementary truths. Go on from faith to faith to glory to glory. This is the faith walk. This is the journey. Jesus went from Samaria, Judea, and Samaria. He was on a journey. You are on a journey. That's why you ain't got time to be keep, keep struggling with the same old habits, the same old addictions, the same old stuff. My God, because it's hindering and slowing down your progress. Yeah. And when we turn back, we're going back to the familiar. Don't you know, my God, don't settle for good. You got to want great. In your life, my God. Oh, my God, you got to move on, my God, from the familiar to the unfamiliar. I promise you, God has blessed you where you at. Uh, but God got something far beyond, my God, where you at. God got some things you want to do in your now, and he got some more things you want to do in your future. I promise you, when you latch on and get excited about your future, my God, and quit wrestling with the same old stuff, my God, there's a future out there, my God, where God is waiting to bless you. He wants to blow your mind. Where the scriptures say, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has in store for those that love him. He told Abraham, I'm going to make you great, but you're going to have to leave, my God, the familiar. You're going to have to leave the stuff that you're familiar with so you can go on to where I'm taking you, journey, my God, so that I can bless you. That's what God is saying to the church. God will not get me off of this. There's blessings beyond where you at. Don't get content and just settle. I'm not just talking about blessings. I'm talking about, my God, a quality of life. A better quality of life, better relationships, my God, better relationship with the children. Part of the spiritual alignment in the 21st century is making sure we are in right relationship horizontal. You cannot be in right relationship with God and dishonor and discredit your sisters and brothers and be hateful to people. Me and God got our own thing. As long as me and God is okay, I'm okay. But then I got an animosity toward this brother sitting right here. The Bible says, leave thy gift at the altar when you're praying and go be restored. Reconcile back to your brother. Then come back and then offer your gift. So that does away, my God, with us telling ourselves that I ain't got to talk to nobody but God. And I can still dislike. I can still be in unforgiveness. I don't have to speak to him. I don't have to speak to her. And I'm all in worship, my God. But I got all this stuff. I know it ain't being preached about, but I'm going to preach about it. I got all this stuff in my heart, my God. And she's sitting right there. And all I got to do is be obedient and get up and say, I need to talk to you, Lisa. Right. Yeah. That's the form. So we cannot, my God, just think that as long as I'm good vertical. Because in order to be good vertical... If, if you are good vertical, it's going to make you be good horizontal. Amen. That means you got to let go of some things. Yeah. That means you got to forgive some people. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Talk to me. Come on. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. <laughs> the Spirit of God is saying, and turning back to the former way of life, the Galatians, where we're turning back to slavery, y'all. My God, Galatians 4 and 9 says, so now that you know God, or should I say now that God knows you, why do you want to go back again? And become slaves once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles of this world. We might not go back and try to worship seasons and stuff like that, but ask yourself, what are you trying, what is the enemy trying to bring you back to? What is the enemy trying to pull you back to? Because the enemy is trying to pull you back, and guess what God's trying to do? God's trying to pull you forward. I, for some of y'all that don't know, that God and the enemy is at war for your mind. God and the enemy is at war for your mind and my mind. And so whoever gets the mind between God and the enemy gets your life. And so because we in church don't mean that God got our life. And so there's a war going on. Watch this now. I'm teaching you. There's a war going on, my God, because the Spirit of God laid this upon me last week, my God, but the Spirit of God didn't let me deliver it, my God, because I want to encourage you that this time that we're living in, you going to have to guard, you're going to have to go go govern, and you're going to have to guide your life. You're going to have to allow the Spirit of the living God to lead you. You're going to have to allow the Spirit of God to rule you. If not, my God, life and pressure and trials and circumstances, heartaches, ups and downs, my God, will make you and I tap out. Because when we're going through these type of things, if we're not reading, if we're not praying, if we're not on the altar, my God, our, our, our flesh is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. I mean, the spirit is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And so when life hits, we're not prepared. Then we end up defeated. Are y'all with me so far? Let me follow you a little bit. Yet the appeal to our old habits, my God, yet the appeal of our old habits and pre-conversion way of life is very strong. Pre-conversion. Uh, what that means is the life before you got saved. Paul is telling the Galatians, y'all going back to something that you did before you got saved. Right. I call it the first Adam and the second Adam. You and I should always be striving to pattern our life after the second Adam. The first Adam sinned. The first Adam messed this whole thing up. And Jesus is considered, my God, the second Adam. 
And so you and I got to pattern our life after the second Adam. So I want to encourage each and every one of us, my God, to make sure that you are functioning more in the second Adam than you are in the first Adam. You should be constantly bringing that first Adam and crucifying him. Because guess what? We think he dead, but he ain't dead. Let somebody mess with your children, women. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Let somebody, my God, mess with your grandbabies. We'll find out if that first Adam is dead. Ooh, come on, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. That's why you got to come on and keep saying. My wife always said, I wish somebody would touch my grandson. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. You think that first Adam is dead. You at war. My God, that first Adam is always trying to peep his head. That first Adam, Toronto, is always trying. Hey, 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 you good boy. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, my. But here's the danger, Christians, when we function more and we think more like the first Adam, then we're in trouble. Because as Christians, we should be going from glory to glory to faith to faith. We should be coming more and more and more like the second Adam. I want to encourage the church this morning, afternoon. We don't want to revert back to the pre-conversion. Keep pushing forward. I'm going somewhere, I promise you. I ain't got long to get there. Mm -hmm. You see, when the path forward is difficult, those deceptive little habits, mm -hmm, those God belittling mindsets, those unhealthy relationships call out to us. Beckoning us not to leave them, pleading with us to return, promising to satisfy us and bring us freedom. I failed many times. That's my God. I, I failed many times. I failed many times in my former life before I got saved. My God, because that stuff will be calling, that life will be calling, my God. And I had to come to a personal revelation, my God, that the very thing that's calling me is the very thing that's killing me. Who am I talking to? See, until you understand that that was calling you, was killing you, you're going to keep going back to it. You're going to keep picking up the phone and answering it. Because you don't see that this thing is killing your purpose, your potential. It's killing your crazy faith. Who am I talking to in the church? Come on, Pastor Michael. My God, the very thing that you don't see is killing you is what's killing you. If you don't see it as an enemy, you're going to keep dating it. You're going to keep sleeping with the enemy because you don't see it as an enemy. My former life was an enemy to me. That's why I'm so tired. Oh, my God. That's why I be going so hard because I cannot let the enemy get back, get a foothold on me. Mm-hmm. They call it, they call it, they call it. Um, bad relationships, old relationships. He's calling you. She's calling you. Oh my God, I know y'all. <laughs> Come on over in the shell, peoples. Come on the shell. Come on the shell. Come on, Sharon. Come on, Champ. Come on, Fancy Francetta. Come on, Amber. Come on, what's calling you right now? What's calling you right now? Whose voice are you yielding to? Whose voice are you submitting to? Uh, what, what is Lord in your mind? What voice is Lord right now? Is it the marijuana? Is it all of those stuff? My God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know some of it's legal, but if you got an uh, illegal uh, uh, card, then you're out of order. I can't get nobody to say that right there. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but what's calling? What's calling? What's calling? See, the temptation to always go back, my God, will call you. Uh, what, is that, what is that movie when my man got sick and strung out? He's like, it's calling me. It's calling me. Uh, New Jack City. Ah, Lord, I know what he's talking about. It's calling me. It's call what's calling you? Watch it. Listen to me, Joe. What's calling you back? What's calling you back to slavery and captivity? I'm, 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 I'm trying to set some of us free. What's calling you to go back? Discouragement, frustration, tired of fighting, ready to let go. These are things, even though we're in the second month of 2020, we are wrestling with and we're at war with, my God. And many of us is tempted, my God, to return back. But turn back to what? Turn back to what? What you going to go back to? That stuff was the reason why you're in here. Thank you, Lord. So when the path of a Christian life is hard, you'll start hearing voices calling you to come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. It's different this time. I won't do you like, he, like I did the last time. I ain't going to cheat on you. I ain't going to cheat. I ain't going to steal your money. Uh, I ain't, I'm going to make sure I buy you something for Valentine. I ain't going to forget our anniversary. <laughs> I'm going to do better this time. I'm going to cut the yard. I'm going to wash the dishes. You ain't going to have to take the trash out. Just come back. Baby, I can't make one at you. I ain't going to. I ain't got no to stay. I ain't got no. Where am I going? He's just calling you, calling. And then he play on your, your emotions. 
that thing, whatever that thing is, play on your emotions. That's why the Bible says, who shall ascend the mountain of God? Those with clean hands and a clean heart. We got to say, God, heal my heart, heal my emotions, and heal my mind. Because many of us been called because our emotions is connected. It's called soul tie. We're not healthy in our emotions. Now, emotions is connected to the soul. Whoever get the mind, get the heart. And whoever get the heart, get the emotions, my God. We got to say, God, heal my emotions, God. Break the chains. Break the shackle. Oh, my God. Break the stronghold of my emotional soul tie. Many of us are so tired of stuff. Hey! hey break the chain, baby. And so long as you're emotionally so tired of something, it's going to always call you. It's going to always call you. Vontez, come back. Lorenzo, come back. Come back, Amber. Come back. Come back. Don't get it twisted, my God. That, that, that first Adam is still alive. Don't be trying to be spiritual and act like you holy than thou because you can quote some scripture and you done made it 30 days, bro. You better ask somebody at the right time, at the right moment, you catch Christ gone. We're going to set it off up in here, baby. You better ask somebody. Ah, oh, my God. What's calling you? What's calling you? What's calling you? The poor to go back. The poor to go back. The poor to go back. Can I help you understand something? That's why and I hate to say this and I say this with all humility and I say this with, 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 with pain in my soul. It troubles me when I see people that was running hard for God. Paul said you was running a good race. Uh, you was running. You was going hard. You was handling your business. You was showing up. You was faithful. You was excited. You was in love with your first love. What happened? What happened? It came calling. And if it ain't calling, it came knocking. And if it didn't knock, it came daggling. If, if, it did, if it didn't come like that, it came with gold teeth. Who am I talking to? <laughs> Amen. Somebody know I'm in the spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because right, ca what is calling you? What is calling you? I should have titled that. What is calling you? What is calling you? I'm trying to let the spirit of God set the church free. Let's go a little deeper. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, my God, my God. All you, my God. And then when something starts calling you, my God, this is what we do. Uh, you and I, we start recalling memories of how good the old life used to be. Uh, the, the, listen to me, church. There's always a battle to move forward. Why is that? Why is that? Because the temptation to turn back is always there. We always think that it's easier to go back. But I want to remind you that the very things that you think that it's easier to go back to is the very things that has broken your heart. A lot of the scars that you and I have in our mind and in our hearts is because of the stuff you and I that the enemy is trying to pull us back to. So you got to have a paradigm shift in your mind. Why would you want to go back to the very stuff that has scarred you? What is a form of ignorance, a form of insanity is to keep doing the same old thing? Keep going to the same old places, doing the same old thing, hanging out with the same old people. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. The turn back, the temptation to go back is always there. Can I help you? That's why I say it takes a real one. Man, I woman to serve God. Because it's easier, Minister Melvin, to get discouraged and quit. It's easier to go back. But you got to ask yourself, what am I going back to, though? What am I really going back to? We understand to keep things in context. They was going back to seasons and days. and They was, they, they was observing all these idols. They went back to idols. We still got them today, idols. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little. Going forward, church, watch this now. Lead you and I into the kingdom. Going back will cause you to perish in Egypt. Egypt means captivity. Egypt means the world. Going forward will move you and lead you into the kingdom. Think about what's inside the kingdom. I need you to get a revelation. This is a sweet spirit. I'm hearing God now. See what I'm trying to say? You think about the kingdom. Everything that you need is in the kingdom. And so a lot of us don't understand because soon as things get tough, we thank God and dropped us. We thank God and forgot about it. If God don't do this, we thank God's mad at us. So we quit pursuing God. We quit seeking God. Oh, my God, because the heavens sometimes feel like they're closed. But can I help you understand something so you can grow up? Sometimes God will shut the heavens because to see if you're still going to serve him. If he give you everything every time you ask, my God, and then, you, uh, when, he, and then when he shut them, now all of a sudden you wounded. Now all of a sudden you got God don't love me, God mad at me, and so forth. Sometimes God will close the heaven because God, guess what? God is trying to train you to follow him without him giving you everything. Can you follow God when he don't answer your prayer? Can you follow God when he closed the door that you knew that was open? Can you follow God when you went to three interviews, my God, and they told you you're going to get the job, but then they told you you ain't going to get the job. Will you still follow me? Come on, somebody. 
God got many ways to train us. Because, see, God, understand, if I don't start training them right now, my God, when they face real opposition, that's why I took them the long way instead of the short way. Come on, my God, they're going to faint and go back. Just like the children of the nation of Israel wanted to go back when they got to the wilderness, we are that same type of people. And we all know that we have all returned back to stuff that we know that don't mean us no good. So this, this message applies to everybody across the board. Ain't nobody above this message. Everybody's fighting idols. Everybody's fighting mindsets and, and discouragement and frustration to return back, my God, because it sits and it feels like it's more easier, but I promise you, it ain't. Yeah. Oh, my God, the thought of being in captivity to that, again, I ain't going to be able to do it. Yeah. So I just suffer on the road to Golgotha. Yeah. It's easier to suffer with Christ than to suffer without him. He said, uh, that if you reign with me and you suffer with me, you're going to get, if you suffer, you're going to reign with me. Mm. So the kingdom, my God, will push you forward, my God, and going back will leave you in Egypt. But, 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 but watch this. Don't listen to those voices. I'll look to those memories. This is one of my favorite. Train yourself to listen to the voice of God. This is Paul's first warning to the Galatian church, and it's a warning to us also. Paul said, train yourself to be godly. My God, the word of God says to, to those that know to do right and choose to do wrong to him and his sin. And then the wages of sin equals death. The ultimate death that Romans 8, what is that, uh, 23 talks about is physical death, separation from God. Sin would separate you and I. It would hinder, my God, the voice of God. Oh, you're listening to me, church. Look at your neighbor and say, turn back to what? Point number two, turning back is also turning your back on God. Oh, my God. Uh, that, that's something. See, I don't, that don't resonate with me. Because uh, he crawled to Calvary. The Bible says that he went a little farther. Uh, he began to sweat great drops of blood, my God, in the garden. Uh, he had us in mind, y'all. Uh, he said, if I don't make it, my God, and fulfill what I came down here to do, my God, uh, the people are going to be in trouble. He said, I got to crawl my way. I can't die outside of Jerusalem, my God. And so the Bible says that God, even in the midst, my God, of not wanting to go, his flesh said, God, if it be thy will, if it be thy will, let this cup pass. He said, but nevertheless, see, his flesh wanted to quit, but his spirit rose up. That's why you got to feed your spirit when you're facing opposition, when you're facing trials and tribulations, my God. Who, my God, like I had to do Wednesday when I told y'all, my God, I had to get in my spirit because my flesh was weak. I was discouraged. I was frustrated. Come on, somebody. Who am I talking to in the church? But my spirit rose up. Come on, somebody. And so it come a time in life where your spirit going to have to dominate your flesh. And Jesus, my God, said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And the thought of turning my back on God. Now, what? Amen, Melvin. Now, think about this. Y'all know, I'm, let me go a little street. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what, you didn't turn your back on that stuff you're trying to go back to. So why are you going to turn your back on God? Who said you are fearfully and wonderfully made? He said he created you in I and I image, my God. So why do we want to go back to something that's going to hurt us? Something that's going to harm us? Something that's going to drop us? Certain people have been dropped in this room. People have promised you stuff and, and, and didn't come through. People have has done stuff to you. They hurt you. They scarred you. Why would you want to go back to that church? This is what Paul trying to say to the Galatians to bring contact. Why would you want to go back up under the law? You already been set free from the law. Chapter 5, chapter 5, verse 1 says this right here in Galatians. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again into slavery to the law. Uh, it's one thing to get free, but can you stay free? Can you stay free? But if you got a plan B, C, D, and E, you ain't going to stay free because you're going to always give yourself a pass to go back. Oh, my God, but if you ain't got no plan B or plan C, you can't do nothing but go forward. You got to take a licking and keep on ticking. You got to keep pushing because what you going to go back to? I ain't got nothing to go back to, so all I got to do is go forward. Yeah. Or oh, it'll help you if you receive it. It'll help you if you receive it. Many of us has given ourselves a pass to return back to slavery. Think about a dog vomiting and then going away, partying and kicking, and they coming back and licking up the vomit. Even out there, set for an hour or two or so. That's the picture I want you to get. It's gross. Sin is gross. Bondage is gross. People that's in captivity, they can't worship God. They don't want to pray. They won't come to the altar. And, ah, oh my God, my God, but I like freedom. Is anybody free in the church? Mm, mm. When you turn back, you don't find greater freedom. You find greater bondage. You don't find greater freedom. But that's not the worst thing about turning back. What's worse is you end up turning your back on God. 
uh, the only one that truly knows you. Now, see, that ought to convict us because he didn't turn his back on you and I. Even when he wanted to quit, he found some inner strength. <laughs> he tapped into that inward transformation. Oh, my God, he went internal. My God, what he was dealing with, my God, was the thought, my God, of everything he was going to have to suffer. These same people that I'm going to go for, that I'm going to get bruised and disfigured for. These same people, my God, <laughs> oh, my God, that I'm going to give my back to and I'm going to give my life for. They're going to lie on me. They're going to talk about me. They're going to misunderstand me. They're going to quit on me. Oh, my God, he didn't want you. He didn't want you, but he said, I got you. His flesh didn't want to, but his spirit said, I got to. It's a must. Yeah. Yeah. Even Jesus, thank you, Holy Ghost, said, I'm going on <laughs> to see what the end of a saved life going to be. Jesus told himself, I got to go. I got to fulfill what I came down here to do. I came down through 40 and two generations. I wrapped myself in flesh, my God, and I hung between two thieves, my God, so I could redeem the world. But God didn't quit on you, so why would you quit on God? God endured everything. The 39 lashes is every different disease that you and I would counter. God paid the price for it all. He didn't leave no stones unturned. For depression got to go. Bitterness, all that stuff. If you get to Jesus, he'll deliver you from that stuff. Oh, my God. But he said, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Uh, the thought of turning my back on someone that gave his life for me. Uh, one of the things that forges me through, y'all know my story. My God, I, I didn't turn my back on the streets. I did whatever I had to do to do what I had to do, baby, to kill myself. Yeah. Why would I quit on God who's giving me life? Yeah, yeah. That is so elementary, but it's so profound. Yes, it is. To, 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 to go so hard, Tiki, after stuff that was killing me, killing our relationship and everything. And then to get in God and taste the goodness of the Lord like I have, Brittany, and to see God move and turn my life upside down like he has, and then to get so discouraged and so defeated, well, I want to go back to that stuff, the devil is a lie. Yeah, I have to share a little bit there because some of y'all need to understand that. Oh, my God, your story, my story ain't no different than your story. I'm just owning mine. Would you own yours? I'm just real to know that mine ain't to be played with. Now, you think you can play with yours. I can't play with my former life. I can't play with my past. My past is a real past. And so is yours. I'm just accepting that. If you accept yours, somebody give God a hand in the church house, baby. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, my God. Mm. So turning your back, my God. This is what the Galatians was doing. The path forward, my God. The path forward. Uh, the, path, the path forward in their relationship to God looks much more difficult than they thought or hoped it would be. See, the reason why people is not prepared when things get tough, because guess what is missing? The pulpit around the nation ain't telling you that you got to pick up your cross, yeah. that you have to deny yourself, yeah. and that you're going to have to follow me. That's the heartbeat of discipleship, denying yourself, picking up your cross. See, if we teach what Christ teach, then the people will be ready when the path get hard. Yeah. My God, when there's obstacles in front of you, my God, you say, well, okay, I got to go through it. I got to go around it. I'm going around, up it, up it, one of the way. I'm going through it, around it, up it. But one thing I ain't doing is turning back. You got to deny yourself. You got to pick up your cross. And you got to follow God every single day. Can I help you understand something? There is a suffering way connected to your walk. And if you don't prepare your mind for that, you will not outlast the storm. Right. The Bible says that all those that desire to live godly shall suffer persecution. If you don't arm yourself and tell yourself, I know I'm going to have to suffer, there's going to be some things, Lauren, that I understand and some things that I don't understand. There's going to be some things that I didn't ask to go through, but I got to go through. There's going to be some wilderness. There's going to be some trials. There's going to be some tribulation. There's going to be some ups and downs. It's all part of your cross. And if you don't prepare your mind for that, you're going to quit and return back. Because you already got a plan B, C, D, and E, and F. Oh but if you get like the pastor, my God, you ain't got no plan B. So if I turn back, I'm going to die. So if you turn, get to the point where you say, if I turn back, then why am I going to die? Purpose going to die. Purpose going to die. Purpose going to die. Relationships going to die. Kids is going to die. Who in my life got to suffer if I turn back? Ooh, there's a whole lot of stuff going to die if you go back, church. There's a whole lot of people going to suffer if you go back. You got to go on. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep moving forward. I'm trying to encourage you. It's better on this side than it is on that side. It's better in the future than it is in the past. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Mm. Trying to encourage you. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. They are a little bit discouraged like some of us. Mm. Oh, yeah, I see. I had to put that because I'll be in. Uh, there's a little bit, they're, they're a little bit discouraged and, and a little burnt out. Mm -hmm. Now they're looking for a little consolation. 
I've been doing this by myself a long time. And I've been kept for nothing. I'm tired. This is when you get to the point where you're tired. You got to flip over there and, and say, in due season, if I faint not. See, you got to do like David. You got to encourage yourself. See, I, I want to help you understand some church. I'm trying to pastor you and pull you to the future at the same time. See, you're going to have to, that's why you got to get that word inside of you. Because when the flesh rise up, when life rise up, when situation rise up, my God, you want the word of God to rise up. That's why the Bible says, don't worry about to say when the time come, I will speak for you and through you. But if you ain't got nothing in you, Grant, God can't pull nothing out of you. Oh, my God. So when you get discouraged, my God, you got to say, why, oh, why am I, oh, why am I cast down? Why am I so discouraged? I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm greater than he. See, the key role, greater is he. We quote that, but is he in you? Yeah, yeah. Greater is he, right? Relationship, intimate with God. Greater is he, that intimate, personal, personal relationship with God. Uh, uh, then he, greater is he, that is really in me, that I'm connected to, that I spend time with, that I'm not dating. I'm not picking and choosing. Greater is he that lives inside of me. Trust me, the Spirit of God don't live in anything. It don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I preach the truth. The Spirit of God don't live in anything. A lot of external excitement don't mean that the Spirit of God is moving. So greater is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. God is saying that was on the inside is greater than that was on the outside. But you got to tap into that. You got to tap into that. You got to draw strength from internal. You got to draw strength. 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 You can't draw external. Draw it internal. There are some things that you're going to get external, but there's other things you're going to draw internal. When Amber ain't no very world well around, when you're having a Gethsemane moment, you're going to have to talk to yourself. Amber can't get to the phone because she's at school. First lady can't get to the phone because she's at work. I'm going to have to talk to God myself. You're going to have to know how to get a hold of God without somebody else. Who am I talking to? Because, see, many of us, my God, if, we can't, if somebody don't answer the phone, then what we do? We go to Facebook. Looking for sympathy, looking for the world to encourage us, looking for somebody in the world to agree with us. How about going to God? How about going to that constitution? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. What, let me ask you a question. Uh, this is what my first lady, my wife helped me. What idols are you most in danger to returning to? I'm going to say like that. Come on, give me a few minutes. I'm going to a good time. What idols, so for those that don't understand, an idol is anything that we worship more than God. An idol is anything that our affection, that we are affectionate to more than God. Our idol is anything that we put before God. So guess what? Guess what? Guess what? If God told me to read, but he told me to read at the same time my favorite TV show come on, he may give you grace and mercy this one time. And maybe two or three times. But then God now see that this TV show is your God. That you love this show more than you love my voice. Right. And you love spending time with me. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? And so idols is anything that we put before God. Yeah. Too much studying can become an idol. Too much working out can become an idol. Yeah. Too much of anything that replaces your devotion and your commitment to Christ yeah. first yeah. is an idol. Yeah. That covers everybody in there because we all got it. Oh, oh, my God. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give my hand. I want you to write this down because I need you to, I need you to guard. Because I talked to y'all what months ago about the danger of shipwrecking. What, what idols are you in danger of returning to? What is it, church? Don't clap and don't shout and don't say that's good, Pastor. You need to be writing if you do. Uh, typing or whatever you got going. I remember those things that that, that you see freedom in, but really it's captivity and bondage. Idols. Idols. That's what the Galatians was doing. They were returning back to idol worshiping. They was in love with the seasons, the days, and the times. Paul said, you're free from that. Remain free. Don't go back up under the law. Don't return back to the things I delivered you from. God has delivered you, church, from a lot of stuff. Why are you going to go back to it? Don't be like a dog returning back to his vomit. Come on. You're free? Stay free. But you got to pay a price. That's part of denying and taking up your cross and following Jesus. Those three points, deny yourself, taking up your cross and following Jesus. You got to constantly do those things. Every single day, you got to deny yourself. Every single day, you got to take up your cross. And every single day, you got to have a conscious decision to follow God no matter what 
comes your way. And when you take on those three points right there, and you o o obey those three principles right there, uh, it's a whole lot of idols that can't get you. There's a whole lot of voices that can't get you. Because guess what? If a voice is calling, you got to deny yourself. If the storms get tough, you got to pick up your cross and keep going. If you desire to quit, you got to keep following. I just gave y'all three points, and I just gave y'all three ways that scripture speaks. When they call it, deny yourself. Nope. Decline. Mm -hmm. You know you're getting ready to get your taxes and some bills you need to pay? Don't look to dress up external, my God, and then you pull, and then your bills just stuck. I'm trying to be careful, my God. I, I, I'm saying because I'm trying to steal with this point. God ain't shifting me yet. You got to deny yourself. When God bless you with a little surplus, my God, be obedient with it. Don't tell yourself, I'll do it next time. You... I was teaching Pastor Ron. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I was teaching Pastor Ron this morning. I was telling him about debt. And God was speaking. And God was showing me this morning. That when a person is strapped, when a person is defeated by mountains and mountains of debt, whatever that debt is, I want you to understand something. Thank you, Holy Ghost, because this is another form of slavery and bondage. This is why God bringing it back. And I see now why he had me and Ron talk about it this morning. Debt, financial pressure, affects every area of a person's life. Because if I got a lot of financial debt, my God, it's going to affect my relationship with my wife. If I'm not working, men, but I'm married, and she's working, she's holding it down, and we got all these bills, and you ain't really bringing nothing to the table, that put pressure on the relationship. Debt would also cause you mental pain. Debt and financial problems would affect you physically. It would affect you emotionally. Debt and financial problems, my God, would affect us relational. Debt and financial problems, mountains of debt, my God, would affect you and our relationship vertical. Yeah. Guess what? I'm angry. I don't want to pray. I don't feel good. I'm frustrated. So, you know, I'm just, I don't want to read. I'm exhausted. My God, I'm just, I'm worried, 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 worried. Debt and financial mountains is a bad boy because it affects every area of a Christian's life. If you are, because if you look at, if you, if you let your debt speak louder than obedience, you're not going to honor God with your 10%. Instead of you giving them that 100, you're going to give them 85 and think that you done right, but you didn't. I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm trying to show you. That's why it's so critical to guard the lust of the eye, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh. Them is the only three points that a man or woman can be tempted. And a lot of our debt is because, my God, now I'm sorry. For those that went to school, you were trying to get your education. I understand that. I think that's some good debt. And having a house, that's a good debt. But I'm talking about them credit cards that they got your name on it, but it's those people's money. What am I trying to say is that financial pressure affects every area of your life. That's why it's so critical that you do everything you can. See, I purposed in my mind back when I was like 30-something years old. I told myself at 45 I wanted to be debt-free other than a house payment. Amen. And I've arrived. Amen. See what I'm trying to say? But I purposed in my mind. I purposed in my mind. Y'all missed that. I'm talking about no financial pressure, giving God the glory. But I had to pay a price. I had to deny myself. I had to pick up my cross. I had to be disciplined. I had to be obedient. See what I'm trying to say? Because I understand, my God, that I'm going to need my credit so I can't be messing up my credit. I'm not going to be using these people's money and don't give these people back their stuff. It's going to affect my credit, which is going to hinder me from doing business in the unfamiliar. Yeah. See, many of us is cool with doing business in the present, but my God, your credit, you can't do nothing, no business in the unfamiliar. There are certain things that God want to do in your life that's going to request, it's going to require your signature. Yeah. 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 Financial debt affects every area of a man or woman's life, including your relationship with God. And when your daughter really needs somebody, your son really needs some, boy, I ain't got no money. Get away from me. Now you're talking crazy to them because you. Now you discard her. Now you discard him. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. You got to give God something to work with. Yeah. So now understand why the Spirit of God said those that's going to get a little something back from the governor, do right back. Amen. Do right back. Yes. I'd rather for you, I teach uh, 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 Pastor Ron, the key is, and my mama taught me this principle when I was a little kid. 
She said the key is to have more money staying in than you got going out. Anytime you get paid and more money's going out than you got going in, staying in, you're in trouble. You're upside down. You're in slavery. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm trying to get you on top of it because what's on top of you could get up under you if you follow the principles of the Constitution. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. But you got to be disciplined. And the key is to get more money staying in than you got going out. And if you're not there yet, purpose in your mind to get there. That means you got to deny yourself some restaurants. You can't go out every Sunday. You can't go out to every movie. You can't go out to every concert. You can't get the newest weed. You can't get the newest suits. You can't get the newest dress shoe. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Oh my God, suffer on this end so you can be blessed on the back end. Who am I talking to in the church? You got to get to a point where you can live like a king and not shout and talk like a king, but you live like a king. Who am I talking to in the church? You got to get there. Part of a pastor's job is to help you now and take you to the future. Yeah. Everything the Spirit of God is saying is dealing with the now so you don't go back and then moving you to the future. Many of us are terrified of our future. Yeah. We have settled for good and we don't want great. Right. Somebody give God a hand one more time. We have to watch for destructive habits and past ways of living, y'all. We have to watch it. Re-emerging and trying to take control of us again. That's what Paul is, uh, is warning the church, Minister, Pastor, Minister Melvin. Uh, uh, you was free from this. Remain free. Don't go back to worshiping seasons and days and times and all of those type of stuff. You know, stuff will re-emerge. Trust me. The enemy's always knocking. The enemy's always calling. He's always beckoning. He's saying, come, it's better over here. It's going to be different this time. I promise you it's good. I promise you, my God, the enemy coming, the enemy, thank you, the enemy comes through people, places, and things. That's the only way he comes. Just like he comes through the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and pride of life. That's it. People, places, and things. So be careful that, my God, the enemy ain't reemerging in the people, places, and things that you're hanging out with. That's trying to ultimately get you to, the ultimate goal of Satan is to get you and I to tap out. That is the ultimate goal, to get you to quit and renounce your walk with Christ. To tell yourself it don't matter. I don't believe in Christianity no more. I tried God. That's the ultimate goal. And that's really, to me, death. Another form of death. And people are turning away on God every single day. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So, my God, when the destructive habits come around, we begin flirting. With, they, they began floating with days and months and seasons and years. They rekindled their old romance with those that by nature are not God. <laughs> they come with that old, Pastor Francetta, Pastor Mellon, Sharon, First Lady, they come with that old religious spirit. Quoting a whole lot of scripture. I'm a deacon at the church. I'm not putting nobody down. Watch that. Uh, it might not be that in relationship. How about nobody loved me? He the only one or she the only one that ever showed me love. I went to the church, my God, and, and, and the pastor didn't speak to me, so he must don't love me. I tried God. See, I'm trying to say, I went to God and, and he didn't answer my prayer. He must don't love me either. The sweet, the sweet, the first lady is so sweet and she's so meek and mild. My God, I spoke to her and she just kept walking. She must don't love me either. You'll be surprised how many people replay this stuff in their mind from past experiences that we didn't cause. Going over Christ didn't cause. People are voting right now, online and right now in her. Voting on me. Every time you stand before somebody, people vote on you. Whether they're going to follow you or whether they're going to stay away from you. Anytime you're in church, anytime you're at work, people are voting. My God, on your job, man, God, with that welding job, people are voting. Either they're going to be with you or they're not going to be with you. See what I'm trying to say? So you got to be careful that you don't start rekindling stuff that God delivered you from. Yeah. Low self-esteem, yeah. procrastination, laziness, yeah. gluttonous, and all of those type yeah. of stuff. Don't rekindle the romance with something that's going to pull you back yeah. and pull you away from God. Oof. You got to keep yourself straight. I tell man quite often, I'm good. I'm good. Talking about me and first lady, I'm being honest, I'm good. At this present time, 
32 years later, I ain't tempted to do nothing outside of that right there. I'm good. One of the reasons why I'm saying that because one of the things that helped me is I told my wife the other day, when you have reverence, mean fear of God, not ghostly fear, reverence for God, it's just certain sins you won't do. It's because you love God. Because you love God. See, 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 some of y'all, let, 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 let me stay, let me, let me, let, see, even though we've been together all this time, I still have to reassure mine that I'm good. She know, what, she know what it is. She know everything trying to get at me. I have to reassure this one right here. I'm good. And I mean it, I'm good. But watch this now, I'm going to teach you. Listen to me. Oh, boy, you're watching. Listen. But you can't put your place, yourself in places that's going to jeopardize your boundaries. You can't put yourself in places, my God, that's going to cause you not to be good. Man, I won't man. So take that out for relationships. You can't put yourself around people, places, and things that's going to affect your relationship with God. Is anybody, thank you, Pastor. Any, you, you can't put yourself in places that's going to jeopardize yourself with God. So you can't justify why you get to do things that you know, my God, that's, 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 that's going to cross the line. See, these are principles that help you and I live and be ambassadors for the king. Ambassadors, representatives of the king. So, Vartes, I just looked at you. If you want Gia to stay good with you, keep your boundaries. Guard your heart. Watch this. Just like that applies to the natural and relationship, how you think God feel? I, I'm saying this stuff for a reason. Just like I'm intentional about making sure that I keep this ring honorable and not breaking covenant. How do you think God feels? Because God is a covenant keeping God. So when you and I take our ring off with God, you know what I'm saying, and go do stuff and act like God. We take it symbolically, 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 we taking off our covenant. We taking off our wedding ring. Jesus said, I'm married to the church. I'm the, ah, we taking off our ring, my God, acting and putting it down, my God, and going to do things, my God. The God said, no, son, I delivered you from that. I already set you free from that. Why are you going back to that? Don't go, don't go, don't go. No, 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 no. That's the spirit of God warning you when you drive from South Charles to North Charles. He said, no, 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 don't go. You know it ain't going to be good this time. You know he don't mean you no good. Come on, somebody. That's the same way with God. We take it off a covenant. The ring represents covenant to go do things and return back to stuff. My God, the God said you already set free from. You already set free from. You already set free from. You already set free from, church. Don't go back to stuff that God already set you free from. Whatever that is that he set you free from, don't go back. Don't take off your ring. The ring represents covenant. Hallelujah. Blood covenant. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why you can't, oh, well, it was nothing but the blood. I know it was the blood. God gave his blood. God gave his blood. My God, to solidify your sonship. He gave his blood. He gave his life. He, great, he, he, he dripped great blots, drops of blood, my God, to accept you and as hers. Why would I take my ring off and return back to slavery and captivity? Why would I break covenant, my God, and go back to something that he already set me free from? And this is what this, the Galatians were doing. I'm finished. They were returning back to stuff and it was breaking Paul's heart. It was breaking his heart. Ah. I, the Spirit of God used that situation me and First Lady, my God, not to make nobody feel bad. That's not my intentions. Quit saying you know my heart and you don't. And you misunderstand me. God uses that, my God, as a example to show you how we take off covenant, break relationship, break rank, go try to hide and act like God don't say, Adam's where art thou? God knew where Adam was. Adam didn't know who he was. Adam got out of position. God was never out of position. Some of us is in the church out of position. And God is saying, Adam, where art thou? God is beckoning you to come back to the Father. He's beckoning you to turn back, my God. Don't go back. 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 This is not that long. Point three. Let me finish. I'm uh, turning back and squandering what others have invested in you. Turning back and squandering. 
That's like everything Lorenzo, Alvin, Pastor Champ, all y'all that I put in you. It breaks my heart when people go back. I know everybody ain't called to stay with me and my wife and going home for Christ forever. But when somebody turns back and go back to the world that God wants to deliver them from, back to slavery and captivity, it breaks my heart. See what I'm trying to say? Because I, didn't, I, cause I spend time. I make myself available. Even at times early on in pastoring, I get out of balance and put y'all before my wife. That's true. That's true. Which caused me hell in my crib. And she suffered in silence, my God, trying to be respectful yeah. until I got myself together. And so when someone leaves, man, but it breaks my heart. Yeah. Not leave and transfer, leave and go back to the world. Yeah. After all, we didn't invest. That's what Paul is saying, mothers and ladies that understand the Constitution. Paul said, man, you squandered away everything yeah. that I've been through. Paul is like a New Testament Jesus. Listen to this right quick. While Paul was confronting, confronting the Galatians with the core of why they were turning back is foolish, well, there's one last reason why they're turning back is so foolish, Paul said. He mentioned it in, clo in the closing verse of this passage. It is the final appeal. What I'm doing right now, God is appealing to you. Hear me, Holy Ghost, and hear me, people. God is appealing. You'll be surprised somebody's on the verge of turning back right now. Online or in the sanctuary. He says, I'm afraid, Galatians 4.11, I may have labored for you in vain. You may find this con comment extremely unpleasant. Thank you, baby. But what we need to understand is that Apostle Paul is completely bound up with his converts. He can hardly separate his success from theirs, y'all. If they live, he lives. If they continue in faith, then he can continue to rejoice. If they fail, he's utterly crushed. Be careful how you handle people that love you. Be careful how you handle your spiritual oversight and leadership, especially when you have paid a price. Many of you, my God, has been with this ministry for any length of time, at least three years, my God. My God, you have come through some storms with us. We have outlasted a whole lot of stuff. The enemy tried everything he can to try to destroy this ministry in the Genesis. But because of the structure, because of the oversight, and because the heart of your spiritual parents, for those as members of this church, my God, we was able, my God, to steer this ship through Christ. And so, therefore, I am loyal. Now I'm getting to my heart, and I'm close. I am loyal to those that are loyal to me. That mindset was birthed from my former life because I've seen people get killed behind disloyalty. I've seen people get stabbed up in the penitentiary behind being disloyal. I've seen people get their head knocked off like you have, my God, in that penitentiary because of being disloyal. So I'm very, I'm very sensitive, my God, to people, my God, that's loyal. And I'm very, my God, it hurts me, my God, when I've been loyal. And they don't give it back to me because in my former, there was consequences for that. Oh, my God. And so therefore, I can't, I can't, mm. are you listening to me, Kenny? I'm loyal. To those that's a loyal. And so when I see that rank break, I realize it sent me back to a Gethsemane. I seen people lose their life for being disloyal. I'm giving y'all my heart, y'all. That's right. I'm giving y'all my heart. So therefore, I love the people to a fault. To a fault. That's why I got to keep things in balance. This is what Paul is saying. I did that, thank you, Holy Ghost, to bring y'all into the scripture because I need y'all to come into the scripture. Paul is tormented because his sons, a church that he birthed, is returning back to things that God delivered them from. That's why he said in chapter 5, verse 1, he said, Whoo, remain free. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you breaking my heart? Why are you doing this to me? I labored for you. He said, I'm going to stay with you till Christ be formed in you. That's the heart of a father. He said, I'm, walking, I'm working with you. Though you stumble, my God, get back up. He said, he said, he said, Paul, Paul is trying to, he competing with the voice of going back. He's competing with the voice of season and days and times. He said, no, no, remain free, remain free, remain free. Every week I'm, I'm appealing to you to outgrow and outlast the storms of life. Every week, I'm, my God is through me, is calling you out, calling you forth, calling you to your next, calling you to the unfamiliar. Constantly, constantly, constantly. Lord. Let me give you this, my God. Mm. So he's bound up. Mm. My God. There, there's three reminders. Let me give y'all these and I'm done. I promise you. There's three reminders. Please write these down. What is Paul is saying to the church? Paul is saying the first one, not to forget to forsake your former life. He's telling them, don't you forget to forsake your former life. 
He's saying, my God, uh, don't do this. Remember what he says, he said, I'm afraid that I may have labored over you in vain. And so he's saying, don't forsake your former life. The second thing, he said, to also understand your present life. You got to understand your present life. There's trials associated, but the trials when you and God come to make you and not break you. There's a level of breaking, but the breaking is a good breaking because it's developing you. And so you got to understand your former present life, your former present circumstances and situations, church. That, my God, the things that you are dealing with right now, I'm coming in. I only got one more thing to give you. The things you're dealing with right now, my God, if you are properly aligned with God spiritually, they're not to break you. They are to mold you and shape you and develop you and to prepare you for the unknown. That's why God told Abraham to leave thy familiar, leave what you know, Genesis 12, 1, because where I'm taking you. See, at this time, Abraham didn't exercise faith at the level that he was going to need it. So God was stretching Abraham and preparing Abraham, minister, to be the father of faith. He said, go, and I will show you. At that time, he hadn't showed him. So he went on, prayer, on, on faith, on a hope and a prayer. Some things you got to do on a hope and a prayer. As I talked to y'all, some things you got to do blind. Mm. And the third thing, he said, and to live for their future. He wants you to live for your future life. Don't forget, my God, to forsake the former life, to understand your present life, and to live for the future. Conclusion, like the Israelites of the old who found themselves in the wilderness, wanted to go back, the Galatians themselves are in the wilderness, and they wanted to go back. They experienced redemption in Christ, but have not yet made it to the promised land. You're saved, but we ain't made it to the promised land yet. God is still working it out. Come on, somebody. Uh, they're finding the path, my God, forward as Christians too difficult. So they are attempting to turn back. <sighs> the only way to the promised land going off of Christ church is through the wilderness. The only way forward is through the wilderness. They could not go from Egypt to the promised land. They had to stop by the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Wilderness preparation. Yes, wilderness preparation, y'all. Don't return back. Look at your neighbor and say, turn back to what? <laughs> if I can get people to be honest with me, and if you really, like me, not concerned about the opinions of people, at that level. How many of y'all can say, just by showing me your hands, there were some things going on in the mind. Let me see your hands. Ooh. That, 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 that. Okay, put your hands down. That you now, from hearing this word, go out last the storms. Let me see your hand. Okay. 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 How many by the showing of hands that will be honest and say, you know what? Uh, I may have went back and I was, may have been tempted. I may have thought about it. Let me see your hand. Thank you, Lord. How many of y'all can, can agree that this was a much-needed word for your personal life? <laughs> With every head bowed, if you're here right now and you ain't never accepted Christ and you would like to give your life to Christ and if you're online, just follow me. But if you're here this afternoon and you want to give your life to Christ, you have never made him Lord and Savior and you would like to give your life to Christ, can you raise your hand if that's you? Anybody that want to give their life to Christ? Is anybody in here and everybody in here saved? If you're here, my God, and there's some things that you just need to get in proper alignment, with God, let me see your hand. Thank you for those hands. Proper alignment. There's some things, my God, that might, that, 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 that's been, there's some voices, thank you Holy Ghost, there's some voices that's been calling uh, that you need to get God to silence. If that's you, just come quickly. Just come. Thank you, Lord. Father God, now we thank you, Lord Jesus. Father God, I thank you for a timely, timely, much needed work. So, Father God, I'm just asking, Father God, for all of us that remain in the sanctuary to be strengthened, to be empowered. Oh, my God, I thank you, Father God, that every chain has been broken and is being broken off of our minds, off our emotions. Father God, while we're standing here, Father God, we're going to ask you to forgive us. 
for anything, Father God, that we have returned back to. We ask that you forgive us for any form of disobedience, Father God, returning back to people, places, and things. <laughs> Father God, give us the strength, Father God, to forge your own glory. Give us the strength, strength, Father God, to move forward, Father God, in purpose, in destiny, Father God, to that which you have called and commissioned us to do. Father God, I pray that you continue to wake up the mantles, wake up the dreams, wake up the dreams, wake up the mantles, Father God, in the people of God. Give the people of God an inner strength, Father God, like they know not of, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Remind them, Father God, that greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. Father God, break every mental bondage, every emotional captivity, every physical problem in the body. Father God, we also ask that you knock down every mountain of financial debt that's affecting the people of God from worshiping you, Lord, and honoring you, Father God, in every aspect of their lives. Father God, your word decrees, who shall ascend the mountain of God? We ask that you clean our hands right now. Father God, touch our emotions right now. Many of us can't push forward. Many of us can't go deeper. Uh, many of us, Father God, won't even let people love us because we're so wounded in our emotions. So, Father God, take the heart of pain out and put a heart of flesh in us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you strengthen the men and strengthen the women, Lord, that's in this church, Lord. We thank you for it right now, Rainbow Word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Come on and say amen.